On today's World Insight, China's yearly spring festival travel rush Chunyun is underway with hundreds of millions of Chinese making their way home. How does it compare with the Christmas holiday reunions in other parts of the world? Hello and welcome to World Insight with me, Tian Wei. China's Spring Festival travel rush, also known as Chunyun, began on January the 26th. On the very first day, a staggering 189 million passenger trips were taken already nationwide, up nearly 20 percent from last year. For most people on these trips, it's a time for family reunion. So how important is it to be home for most of the Chinese? And what about their way home? And how are they going to take advantage of these trips, not only to see their families, but also to travel around China and even the world? For insights, let's turn to our panelists. For the latest discussion on Chunyun, or the trips that the Chinese are making for home in Shanghai, Joseph Gregory Mahoney, professor, professor of East China Normal University, Singapore. Uh, Lim Tan Wai, adjunct senior research fellow from East Asian Institute at National University of Singapore. In Beijing, Chi Qiang, research fellow of the Global Issues of the Beijing Foreign Studies University. Gentlemen, good to see you. I'm sure you know very clearly this is the busiest travel season for the Chinese. Mainly their destination is home, but not limited to home. So. Uh, tell me more about uh, uh, Joseph. Your observation throughout the years you're living in China. What does this trip mean for most Chinese? Uh, I've seen it from different perspectives. Uh, uh, sometimes, of course, we've been overseas and, and celebrated Chinese New Year, which of course is a very different experience. But uh, I remember back in the late '90s, um, you know, in, in Guangzhou. Um, this is back, you know, when you would take the train, but you'd have to stand in line to buy a ticket. You couldn't buy it with an app or online. Uh, you'd stand in long lines and hope that you could get a ticket. Um, uh, and there would be a lot of people out in the square. I remember one year there was a million people in the in the square or the plaza in front of the train station. And so it's a very unique experience. Of course, the trains now are, are, have changed. They're much faster. Everything is is much better. Um, but it's still it's still quite an, an experience. But on the other hand, um, uh, in in the past few years, uh, not counting the COVID years where we had you know interruptions, but nevertheless. Uh, I've been in Shanghai, and I have chosen not to travel because my kids are here, and, and we we simply stay home. Uh, but one of the interesting things in Shanghai, of course, is that a lot of people who live in Shanghai uh, are actually from somewhere else, and Shanghai uh, empties out. Of course, there's still people who travel into the city uh, from other parts to to maybe visit the Bund, but the rest of Shanghai mm -hmm. becomes almost like a ghost town. It's very interesting uh, to take the subway and not see anyone. So it's, it's a special time. Uh, to, to to sort of experience uh, the, right. the, the other side of the migration, yeah. Spring Festival holiday is the, my favorite season in Beijing. In a very crowded street <laughs> and in the traffic jam, and everything is gone. And what you have, it's a very open, clear and a clean city left in here. But don't get it wrong, everything runs still in a very orderly way. Um, the shopping mm -hmm. mall, supermarket, an airplane. Uh, a transit, bus transit centers, everything is, is just be fine. But for most of the people just to, uh, you know, fly and travel back to their old hometown, I, I do celebrate that moment because for who stayed in Beijing and old, who go back to their home, it's both a golden time to, you know, enjoy themselves. Well, uh, in Singapore, as you know, it's a city a state. So uh, it's a very small place. Uh, so there's no need to uh, travel much uh, to go back to one's uh, hometown. Uh, so people normally celebrate it with uh, relatives uh, and friends. Uh, there are some who would celebrate the reunion dinner earlier and then use the uh, uh, Chinese New Year holidays to travel overseas. So there are also youngsters uh, who do that. But uh, in neighboring Malaysia, which is much larger, you do see a migration of uh, Chinese, uh, uh, ethnic Chinese Singaporeans who have families in Malaysia. They would then travel to uh, Malaysia, uh, to their hometowns, where they have a very warm uh, gathering for reunion dinner 
and also celebrate uh, Chinese New Year with uh, their uh, ethnic uh, Chinese uh, relatives and family members. Now, China and Singapore, for example, are having visa free regime. We see that also taking place between China and a bunch of other countries. Now, how much do you see uh, the preparation is going on in Singapore for the incoming Chinese tourists? And how much enthusiasm is there for Singaporeans to travel to China? Uh, of course, uh, there are great expectations that uh, there will be internal tourism boom in China. And uh, mirror mirroring that and reflecting uh, reflective of that, there is also expectation that there will be great uh, record outflow of uh, Chinese tourism uh, to other countries. And uh, I think uh, the uh, trend of uh, what uh, is tra traditionally known as Sing Ma Thai, uh, tour packages, Singapore, Malaysia and Thailand is, uh, is going to face a, a, a boom. Uh, according mm. to uh, figures uh, provided by Global Times, the bookings, the tour bookings uh, for uh, Singapore, Malaysia and Thailand is 15 times more than normal. Uh, so there's a lot of expectations that tour operators, uh, F&B, uh, food and beverage uh, outlets and entertainment outlets, as well as hotels, will uh, benefit uh, from this uh, sort of a surge in uh, tourism. Uh, there is also a trend that uh, all countries uh, have been watching, not just the Singapore, Malaysia and Thailand. And that is the trend that is uh, that Chinese tourist, tourists are shifting towards uh, the uh, key concept of experience. So instead of uh, just uh, shopping, traditional shopping uh -huh. trips, there's a lot of uh, desire for experience of culture, of experience of uh, local uh, uh, cuisines, and also mm. experience of going to uh, see local sceneries and landscapes. So uh, mm. I think the preparation is really on how to capitalize the and maximize the experiential uh, uh, benefits uh, for uh, Chinese tourism when they visit uh, Southeast Asia, including right. uh, Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand. Professor Mahoney, tell me more about how do you see friends and colleagues around you, their enthusiasm to travel to North America where you were originally from, and also we, f we see not many Americans these days in China, by the way, even in big cities like Shanghai. Uh, do you see that's likely to change as a result of the uh, a beautiful travel season of Spring Festival this year? Uh, I, I don't see a lot of positive signs yet uh, from uh, people in the United States. I think that, you know, uh, the, the, the main problem is that a lot of people uh, who are in the United States, um, they don't have the same holiday schedule. So they have to take a special time off from, uh, they can't leave their school, for example, or, or leave their job unless they have vacation. So it's difficult for them to come back uh, to China for the Spring Festival unless they really made plans for it. Uh, that said, you know, I am, and this is just anecdotally, um, we are seeing a lot more foreigners in Shanghai, in, in Shenzhen. People are coming back. Uh, they're coming back to the universities, back to the international schools. Um, so that's happening. And uh, so, I, but I, I think it's going to take time. Uh, but even then, mm. uh, what, 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 what Americans or, or Chinese Americans normally do uh, for Chinese New Year is they have uh, Chinese associations in local cities. Sometimes these are supported by local Confucius Institutes, and they tend to organize their own sort of gala festivals locally. They have dragon dances, they do other things, they have big dinners. Mm -hmm. Um, so there are ways to compensate uh, because it's it's as 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 I've said even even in the best of times it was difficult for Americans to to drop uh, their schedule and and to to come back for the new year. Mm -hmm. What about the Chinese now? Their enthusiasm going to travel for uh, as tourists uh, in the U.S. Do you see that changing? I, I I've been listening quite a bit and and I've heard people saying that uh, that you know that they're looking more towards Southeast Asia because of. Uh, cost and visa considerations. Uh, I think some people were were optimistic about uh, Japan, but they but they're running into some cost and visa concerns. Um, and uh, with the United States, um, I, you know, some people are going, um, but uh, you know, I, I hear much more people talking about uh, either internal travel or or, or uh, in Southeast Asia. Uh, Mr. Chu, as an economist, I'm sure you have noticed it that uh, there has been an apparent competition going on in China among the ones uh, the you know the uh, the ones who is uh, responsible for gearing up uh, local tourism in different provinces and uh, localities uh, they were having online campaigns uh, even 
uh, you know, the one who's uh, used to sit in office now is jumping onto the internet, to the social media chat rooms, uh, dance one or two pieces in order to attract tourists uh, to go to their localities. You also see uh, what they call uh, internet hot cities, which is like uh, Harbin, well known for its ice sculpture, and also Shanghai recently once again become the focus of uh, attention as a result of a TV series. So how do you see um, both the government and different sectors of the society trying to make their efforts in order to raise people's enthusiasm to travel within China? Does it work? Well, I do think it is going to work. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that China is a really, really large country. We have a very diversified cultures, uh, you know, local cuisines and all kinds of things for you to savor. A lot of people only know Beijing and Shanghai or Shenzhen, Guangzhou, but they, they just, uh, you know, represent a very small part of China. If you can go deeper into this country, you find many things are very, very attractive. It's going to be very exotic experience for you to see. And a lot of people are worrying, you know, so many provinces and cities that they've been jumping to the internet to go to social media and TV, try to, you know, uh, have the bandwagon going on to attract more of the tourists to come. Uh, is that good? Well, I say this is good, actually, if you understand the one-on-one -on -one of economy and economics, you will see competition. Well, especially the good competition will bring more of the, you know, utilities or benefit to the whole market, to the providers and the mm. demanders together. Uh, you have better services through the competition. You have more of the product of the competition, better price of the competition. And anyone who are saying, okay, if you draw too many people into your province or city, is it going to be a problem? Uh, how about the other provinces? You're taking away their, their revenue. No, <laughs> you're too simple and too naive. Uh, come on. We have about nine billion of travels of you know this seven days holiday or further 10 days holiday there's going to be more than <clears throat> enough tourists for you to you know take in especially even for the big cities like shanghai and beijing their maximum availability for the capacity of reception is how much about that it's about you know like you know uh, three million or four millions of tourists to come and flood into your city. And that's Beijing and Shanghai we're talking about. If you're a smaller city, probably only one million tourists will uh -huh. flood over everything you can provide. So don't worry about the tourists. The only thing you need to do is to gear up, prepare enough of the bed and food and services, and the rest of the thing, leave it to the market. Are we seeing a revival of uh, professionalism or updating services as we speak in order to uh, welcome more tourists? Well, I think uh, to, to echo what uh, Chu Laoshi was saying, um, you know, the market, uh, we, we've seen, of course, uh, that there were some hard times and uh, there were people who, unfortunately, their businesses did not succeed uh, during some of those hard times. And, and the ones that did succeed, if they didn't uh, really up their game and get back into uh, providing a high level of service, um, uh, you know, they've, they, they've probably left the market. Um, you know, I haven't done a, a survey of of, um, of um, uh, quality control, but uh, I do think that uh, we do see much better marketing uh, and much better uh, awareness uh, among the providers of the necessity of providing a good experience. I agree with mm. uh, my colleague in Singapore uh, that people are looking for an experience. Uh, we know that that uh, that young people in particular, they like to document their experience and share it in their social media. I, if they have a bad experience, they leave uh, bad comments, and then that ends up really undermining um, the, the 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 business. So uh, the, the businesses that are doing well, that have survived or moving forward, they are providing good experiences and good services and something unique. Uh, otherwise, they're they're probably no longer um, um, you know in the game. Mr. Lin, how do you see the enthusiasm that the Chinese these days are having still about the world? Um, you have seen uh, over the past uh, decade a boom of Chinese tourism all over the world. And uh, yet now, as a result of the pandemic and many other complicated factors, uh, that has been changing, at least for now. Uh, 
how do you see that is related to Chinese enthusiasm or curiosity about the world at all? Well, uh, there are three uh, trends that are ongoing. Uh, the first trend is a uh, commando tourism, uh, right? The commando tourism are a group of uh, young people who are very adventurous. Uh, and they venture both within China and outside China to adventure-seeking uh, tourism, where they go to very tough terrains or uh, very unconventional terrains to have uh, a special uh, experience from it. There is also yeah. medical tourism, where you have uh, uh, Chinese uh, tourists, uh, some who are from Dongbei, going to uh, Hainan uh, during winter uh, for well-being. Uh, they, they also seek uh, you know, uh, 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 well-being uh, trips. Uh, overseas as well uh, to uh, parts of uh, East Asia. And given that, uh, you know, East Asia is uh, has a growing uh, uh, elderly uh, silver population, uh, this kind of tourism will probably grow in uh, popularity. There is also popular cultural tourism uh, where uh, Chinese uh, tourism uh, both within, uh, go to uh, places both within China where they wear uh, Han Fu, uh, uh, traditional uh, Chinese uh, costumes, and they cosplay. Uh, in different parts of China for Instagramming. Uh, they also do that overseas, uh, going to Harajuku in uh, Tokyo or going to Singapore where they uh, pose uh, in uh, Hanfu or cosplay uh, for certain conventions. So mm -hmm. this uh, co popular cultural uh, tourism is very popular amongst young people. So these three trends uh, show that enthusiasm for tourism, both in terms of internal Chinese tourism and outside China remains strong. So I think the shift in, in enthusiasm has been from traditional shopping to experiential tourism. And uh, this shift is likely to become uh, a very long-term uh, trend. Uh, I also mm. missed out uh, eco-tourism, where uh, both uh, Chinese tourists within China and going outside China want to experience environmentally friendly, low-carbon tourism. And that means, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking uh, trips uh, that uh, consume mm. much less uh, uh, environmental resources. So it's not a matter of lo loss of uh, enthusiasm, but it is a matter of how to market uh, tour packages in order to capture uh, these trends uh, that are uh, uh, booming or uh, emerging uh, in um, amongst the uh, Chinese tourists. For, for most of the people that I'm speaking with, including a lot of the foreigners who are staying in China, uh, they're choosing this opportunity to travel to places like Qinghai, or uh, uh, Guizhou or, or other places that they have on their bucket list of, of uh, things that they want to see in China, but they haven't had time. Um, and uh, again, this is because it is the first full year that uh, we haven't had any sort of uh, COVID controls. Um, and people, you know, people who aren't traveling uh, to visit family, but to their hometown, they are looking at opportunities to go to places. Now, there are people who are still traveling uh, overseas. Uh, uh, I, I was speaking to a colleague the other day who uh, was planning a trip to Istanbul. Um, so I, I think that, uh, you know, there are people who, who still want to to go out and see the world, uh, but I think they're being more selective about where they go. Um, and I agree with the, 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 the idea that uh, it's no longer about shopping or luxury shopping. You know, the, I remember uh, several years ago, I went to, to Jeju uh, Island, which, you know, had this very uh, convenient uh, travel uh, these travel packages between uh, uh, Jeju and Shanghai. And there was this place right when you landed in, in, in Jeju that was just shopping mall after shopping mall of uh, duty free. And a lot of Chinese would just go to Jeju to eat and shop and then come back uh, to Shanghai. Right. But I think, you know, the, the, the thing is now it's, 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 of course, you can buy a lot of those same products in Shanghai. There's really no reason to go uh, to Jeju or anywhere else to buy them. Uh, but at the same time, um, I think the younger generation in particular uh, has a different idea of value. Of course, as uh, uh, was mentioned, uh, the idea of uh, being eco-friendly, but also mm -hmm. no longer wanting to show brands the same way that the older generation did, uh, having a very different sense of uh, aesthetic. How much do we see the services and also the efficiencies and uh, uh, the availabilities of uh, uh, fast trains and transportation and be improving in China? and how to make sure better access for the common folks? Well, I think currently we have already seen a major change in transportation as well, as just, uh, you know, Joseph just mentioned. Uh, and also just the Taiwan has mentioned about commando travel. It's because we have a very high speed, uh, you know, uh, train systems and network recently in China. 
Well, what changed a little bit is, for example, when I used to want to travel from Beijing to Urumqi, which is like, you know, 6,000 kilometers away from here, I used to need to take more than seven days of, you know, hard sea train just to go there. Everybody need to wait in the corridor, uh, you know, have a little foldable seat on, you know, uh, in the joint, you know, uh, parts of the train. It's a very, very, you know, hard travel time, painful actually for everyone. But right now, what we have is you travel, you know, the main part of your mileage is through the high speed train and through the, you know, aircraft, you know, network uh, for the first uh, lot. For example, I can fly from Beijing to Wurumuchi, you know, or take the high speed train probably only for one day. And then I can switch if I live further than Wurumuchi in some other branch cities. I can then take a local train network or take local yeah. bus transit uh, network. So uh, in, uh, compared to like seven days before, now I only take two days or even shorter than that. So it's more like a combination. People have more choices. You know, they, you know, travel long distance by a faster way. And then if they want to travel to their uh, little village, to their little county, and then uh, they switch to some other transit. So I think this yeah. has been made, I think change has been made only within the, the years of 20 years or 10 years. I think that this change has been phenomenal. And in the future, uh, I assume with such kind of the hot buzz happening with the tourism all over China, not only with big cities. So I think the government will make more infrastructure improvement to help people travel around, including the home goers. So you see an interesting phenomenon. It's not anymore. People are waiting in the square in front of a train station in order to secure a ticket. But rather, there is enormous amount of e-traffic and uh, uh, because many have need to purchase online. And therefore, there were enormous amount of traffic jam, quote unquote, uh, while people are waiting to get into line, get in line, uh, waiting online in order to get a ticket. So that is uh, what is happening today. Uh, there is a change uh, where the traffic is happening right now. Uh, so, uh, Joseph, uh, tell me more about uh, how you are seeing stories like this taking place in China. Uh, how much is still need to be done in order to make sure people are going to have a smooth trip back home? Well, let's let's be fair. You know, this morning, for example, it, it was raining in Shanghai, and around ten o'clock this morning, I had to uh, attend a meeting, and I made a mistake. I should have taken the subway, but instead, I used Didi to call a, a cab. And uh, I found that I had to wait 45 minutes uh, because it was too close to rush and it was rain. And so there was a surge in demand, right? Now, you can't have um, uh, uh, um, this expectation that you will always be able to fully satisfy uh, these exceptional moments when the market is really uh, uh, mm. buzzing with, with activity. Um, and so sometimes you have to make some some accommodations now. And I think the government is is trying to to respond to these pressures. But I think you know I think everyone is realistic. I remember I remember uh, uh, many years ago having to stand uh, on the train. Uh, mm. This is the old slow train from from Lanzhou to to Jiaiguan. And um, you know I learned the lesson, which is <laughs> either bring a little chair or uh, make sure that you can sit on your suitcase, right? Um, yeah. I, I, think, I think a lot of people understand that. And, and I, to be honest with you, although it's, it's inconvenient, I think it's also part of the tradition and culture. And I don't think people have this sort of uh, 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 exceptional expectation that everything has to be perfect or run smoothly. That's a great point, isn't it? That, that uh, the exceptional moment uh, will be rare, and yet uh, it will be uh, met through... Uh, increased uh, amount of uh, services and uh, choices that could be available to the people. Uh, Tian Wai, what is your observation? I know you've been traveling to China quite frequently. Well, uh, the future is uh, technology. And so in order to manage uh, both exceptional uh, surges and also normal uh, traffic conditions, the future is AI. The use of AI will be uh, very beneficial uh, through sensors embedded in the city, uh, to mm -hmm. find out uh, where the traffic conditions are like and to reallocate uh, traffic uh, uh, accordingly. And the second uh, solution is smart cities. Uh, smart cities, uh, China has uh, linked up, I think about 500, is going to link up about 500 smart cities. Uh, ASEAN has the uh, network of smart cities. So they will be observing uh, technologies that are implemented in China, uh, how to uh, sort of uh, allocate traffic between cities starting with uh, smart cities. And thirdly, mm -hmm. if these two technologies are successful, 
they can be exported overseas. Uh, China has uh, exported uh, transportation uh, AI uh, systems uh, to Malaysia, for example. So it can be profitable, profitable if they can solve or mitigate uh, traffic condition conditions and traffic flow uh, and human flows issue. So the future All is right. technology. So thank you so much for the three of you for joining us and sharing your information and thoughts about the uh, travel season here in China, the largest human migration taking place every year as a result of this traditional spring festival. Uh, wish all of you and your loved ones uh, a great year of the dragon. Thank you so much. And that's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to know more, search World Inside. Check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on X and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei on behalf of the team. Thanks for being with us. Bye for now.